Hey everyone, SolarBug Steve here, and today I wanted to show you my solar panel, inverter, and battery setup inside my solar-powered lawn care trailer, and just why I chose to do it this way instead of buying more batteries. So up on top of my 6 by 14 foot enclosed trailer, I've got six 200 watt panels, producing a total of 1200 watts rated capacity. The power from those panels comes down through here, down behind my Ego mower charger. Let me remove that so it's a little easier to see what we're working with. Okay, back to the solar panel power, coming down through here. It goes back up through this disconnect switch into the inverter, and then the inverter takes that power, sends it back down through these battery cables that are coiled up here and into my battery. Then the battery can actually send the power back up through the inverter which changes it into normal household power, in my case, 120 volts, 60 hertz, through this cable, through my main breaker here, which is a 30 amp breaker, and then it goes out through this cable, over to here, where I split it into two 20 amp circuits. This one comes over to here, to this outlet, where I have plugged in my power strip. Oh man, really need to finish this cable management. Let me do that now, which has my lights on the white cable, and all my individual battery chargers plugged into that. Then the second circuit comes down and back over across the battery into this outlet where I normally have my mower charger plugged in and covering up this space here. So this inverter from EG4 is an incredibly capable piece of equipment. You can output 3000 watts continuously. What does that mean? Well, we can run this table saw over here you can also plug in an air compressor and run that at the same time. Or hey, we can plug in two air compressors and run both and a table saw all at once. All right, well maybe we can't do all three quite all at once. However, you can still run quite a bit. Okay, well, it's great that you can power some things, but how long can you power them for? Well, this battery is five kilowatt hours of storage. So you could run that table saw cutting wood at a thousand watts for about five hours continuously. That's a lot of wood. Or you could run almost three table saws all at once, but you can't run it for five hours. So I could run those three table saws for about 1.6 hours or rounding down an hour and a half. That's still a lot of wood cutting. But what does that mean for all the electric lawn care equipment and the solar up top? Well, it's a little tricky to figure out, so let's get into that. So for my mower charger, this is 1600 watts. With these chargers, if all of them are running at once, plus the lights, it's about 1100 watts. So if the mower charger and the batteries are all charging at the same time, we're pulling about 2700 watts out of this inverter. So still just underneath the 3000 watts of rated output. Let's check out how much capacity all my electric lawn care equipment has and compare it to this battery here. Here we have all my Ego batteries lined up. Now, if you add up the capacity of these, you get 5,192 watt hours of storage capacity which is ironically close to the storage capacity of this EG4 battery at 5,120 watt hours. Remember in my other video, I said this battery is essentially enough on its own to charge all of my equipment once if everything was empty. And what about solar? Well, for these panels, let's say they're producing a thousand watts. If they run for an hour, that's one kilowatt hour. If they run for five hours at that rate, that's five kilowatt hours, enough to recharge our battery. Once. Of course, in the real world, things aren't that simple. We might have the sun angle low in the morning and we're only getting two or 300 watts, or we might park underneath shade for a little bit at one of the properties. Only about 65, 70 watts. So we don't always get that kind of production. Point is, for my panels in my area in Florida, my maximum power production potential in the summer is between five to six kilowatt hours of production. 
enough to recharge our battery. Once, and then in the winter, it's lower. It might be three or four kilowatt hours, depending on the month. So that's cool and all, but what does that mean for our purpose of mowing lawns with all electric equipment? Well, if you plug in the mower, you can charge up completely in two hours. So some of my yards are really small and I might not even use 10% of the battery. What are we at? 91%. So a couple minutes of charging will top that right back up again. Others of course might take a lot more. There's one lot there, one lot here, and then one over there that's actually on the other road. The other day I did it and I went from 100% down to 20%. But by the time I drove to the next yard, the mower had already jumped back up enough to where I could finish that yard and, and call it a day. So why buy an onboard battery, an inverter, and do all this work to install this system and not just buy more of these batteries for my equipment? Okay, I gotta go now. Well, one of the biggest reasons is actually cost. So most Ego tools come with the batteries, but if I were to buy a complete new set of everything you see here, it would cost me a total of $4,950, not including tax. So let's just round up to 5,000. That's five grand for a set of these batteries. This battery right here actually costs $1,369. Nice. But of course, you can't just buy this battery and be done. You gotta get the inverter to and do the whole system setup. However, this inverter doesn't have to be connected to solar in order for it to operate. The inverter is for sale for $674. You can basically get this inverter and battery setup for $2,043. So why not just plug in at home and not deal with solar? Well, for me, I really wanted to see if this would actually work, but these six 200 watt, 24 volt rich solar panels cost roughly $1,500, which is a little more than the battery down below. However, all the power that they produce, you don't pay for. So each yard that you're mowing, you're offsetting the cost of these panels. So just the inverter and battery together, that's less than half the cost of the Ego batteries for the same capacity. If you add on solar, that's $3,543, so $3,500. That's still 30% cheaper than buying the Ego batteries. And you're making some of your own power, so you're saving on operational costs while you're out there mowing. So I don't spend time or money at a gas station, and I don't pay for electricity for my specific use case. Let that sink in. Now I wanna make it clear, we're not including everything here. I mean, there's a lot of money that goes into the brackets and electrical wires and components, but this is just a rough estimate to show you the difference of buying a new set of batteries for your equipment versus doing something like this for your setup. There are some other great advantages to doing this too. You're not locked in to one single brand. If you wanna use a DeWalt weed whacker, you can just bring the charger with you and plug it in. If you wanna run a table saw out the back of your trailer, you can do that too, or an air compressor. And even something a little bit crazier, you technically can charge your electric car from this trailer. I wanna be super clear here. This isn't what I do while I'm out there mowing. Remember, this battery is only five kilowatt hours and the solar panels can only produce 1200 watts my car can actually hold 75 kilowatt hours of power. So it would take a lot to charge it up. So it's not really worth it, but if I have extra, I can use it. That's cool. I'll cover all that in a separate video on towing and what it's like, the power consumption and all that kind of stuff later. So one really important thing I wanna point out with this specific EG4 inverter, it requires a minimum starting voltage of 120 volts for its DC solar array. So if you only wanted to do one or two solar panels, it might not be enough to meet that minimum requirement. In my case, each panel here can produce 37 volts under load. And then open circuit voltage, if it's not connected to anything, is 45 volts. So altogether, the minimum I should see when this array is producing power is about 220 volts. I most often see it around 210 to 220 volts while it's producing power. So just be careful if you're trying to design a system, make sure that you're gonna get the right solar panels or the right amount of solar panels to meet the voltage requirement of your inverter. There are a lot of other options for inverters and batteries. Uh, this is just what I chose to go with based on value and ease of use and just the flexibility on being able to add an extra battery or plug in from the grid. If I get home and my solar hasn't produced enough and I need 
to charge up this battery and my equipment before I go out the next day, I can plug in the trailer and then the inverter will pass that power through to the battery and it can output to my circuits and charge up those batteries and charge up the mower. And then in the morning, I would be ready to go again, full charge on my onboard battery, full charge on all my equipment. And I just unplug the trailer and I'm back to mowing again. If I wanna add another one of these batteries, I buy it, connect it back into the same inverter, and now I have double the storage capacity on board. Really cool to have that type of flexibility versus saying, oh, I wanna get some different type of equipment but now I gotta buy a bunch of batteries for that piece of equipment. So if you're thinking about something like this or have done something similar to this, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. I've got a lot more content coming. That's what these are for. Please subscribe. No one will know, except for you, me, and YouTube. And I will see you on the next screen.